guys welcome back it is Christian here so today it is Wednesday and on Wednesdays we do I was about to say make a pause but no we don't on Wednesdays we do will I buy it will I buy it is basically where I talk about four to five products every single week that are just about to launch on the market and I'm gonna let you know why or why not I plan on buying these particular products so it is different from the anti haul in the sense of anti hauls are products that I'm just like no I don't need you I don't want you and I'm not gonna buy you so anti hauls are like hard no's I have no intentions and no desire to pick up those products whereas this is more of a, I might actually want the products but I just don't feel that I need them or there are products that I might not want to buy right now and maybe down the line I'll give them a second look so that's what makes them a little bit different than the anti haul on top of that makeup releases are coming out so much so fast so often it's to the point now where we kind of have to stop and really think about what we're investing our money in and really think about whether or not we actually kind of like need these products and then it's a really great way for us to discuss you know different types of products what each of us thinks about those products and why or why not we love them think we're gonna buy them and think we're not gonna buy them so it's just a fun way for us to open discussions and talk about all of the hot items in the makeup community that are coming out in the coming weeks, coming months. I got this particular video idea from Samantha March, and as always, I will have her information link found down below, and I will also have a Trend Moods Instagram link down below. So if you guys are interested in seeing some of the new products that I'm gonna be talking about today, then you are in the right place. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already, and if you are not new to my channel, welcome back so yeah let's go ahead and talk about some new makeup products and let's kind of see you know where my mind is at in the purchasing of these actual products so the first product that we are going to be talking about today of course is the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette this the day that I'm filming this video which is Tuesday July 25th is actually the day that this palette will go live so before I answer the question on will I buy it, let me kind of tell you how I started my day. I woke up at 6 a.m. to get ahead on some filming because I'm a little bit behind. So the first thing I did when I woke up this morning, I got on my cell phone and got on Anastasia's website. The first thing I did after I took a shower, what did I do? I got on Anastasia's website. I ate breakfast. Then what did I do? I got on Anastasia's website. So obviously I have every intention of purchasing this palette. I've already mentioned it. There's no way that I'm not gonna purchase this palette. Modern Renaissance is definitely in the top five of my favorite palettes and this is Modern Renaissance's sister. You gotta complete the family, you know what I mean? It does retail for $42 and it does come with 14 different shades just like the Modern Renaissance palette. Right by this palette and the Marc Jacobs palette that I either mentioned last week or the week before, I think I'm gonna go on a palette no buy because I have so many eyeshadow palettes and I really want to take the time to really really play with the eyeshadow palettes that I do already own. But let me tell you why I'm so into this particular palette and it's the same exact reason why I was so into the Modern Renaissance palette for two reasons. They're original. I know you can look at this. I look at this palette and I can honestly say that I don't have a palette with this exact same color scheme. And I felt the same way about the Modern Renaissance palette. Yes, it was a warm tone palette, but the undertones of those colors were different from anything else that was out on the market and there has been so many warm tone palettes since the modern renaissance palette one great thing about anastasia palettes it's it's never geared towards one type of eyeshadow lover one type of makeup lover it always has a good variety of shimmers mattes cool tones warm tones like it throws a little bit at you so you always have the opportunity to make any type of eye look that you want her palettes always have mostly matte shadows, which means that it's going to be easier to create eyeshadow looks and you're not going to have to reach for anything else. Her and Narvina stay on trend with what's hot and what's out right now, but they always do it with like a little bit of an edge, a little bit different, a little bit more fun, a little bit more unique. And her eyeshadow quality is just freaking bomb. I just think that there is not a doubt in my mind that I will be purchasing that. I have, when I say that I have been on Anastasia's website for the last like every 15 minutes hitting refresh didn't say when the palette was going to get released so all morning I was refreshing and then I saw on Twitter and Trend Mood's website that it was going to be released at 9 30. Boom I was on the website at 9 30 black screen just black couldn't do anything nothing was working so I'm not giving up hope because I will be purchasing that palette if I don't get it now if I don't get it on launch day I will for sure be purchasing it on August 1st when it gets released at Sephora's website I'm 100% picking this palette up. I think it looks beautiful. I'm looking at the picture right now and I just feel like everything is just wearable. Even this like limey type green on the in the palette just looks like it can be really pretty on the lower lash line if you don't want to wear it all over the lid. You know, it's deep, it's a little bit darker and it's just a little bit more fun. But then I also think that it has the right amount of neutrals in the palette as well to where if you are a neutral girl, you can still get a lot of use out of this palette 
heck yes, I will be purchasing it without, without a shadow of a doubt. So uh, let me know down below, did you guys try to purchase it and did you get run off with the dreaded black screen that I did? Let me know down below if you're going to be picking that up and what you think about that particular palette. I think it's, and I haven't touched it, I haven't seen it in person, but I just think it's going to be like an absolute must. It is, it's going to transition beautifully into fall and winter time. It's just hands down a palette that I think like you need. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to be talking about, I want to purchase, but I am not going to purchase. My inner teenager right now is currently kicking and screaming and like really upset with me that I'm saying that I'm not going to purchase this, but it's just one of those things where I look at it and I'm like, it looks so fun and I want it but I don't need it and I have plenty of brushes. It is the Spectrum Collections in collaboration with Paramount Pictures and it's the Mean Girl Burn Book and Brush Set. I, when I saw this, my initial reaction was yes, I have to, have to have it. Like I just have to because from 2004 to like 2009, my vocabulary was the quotes for Mean Girls. You know what I mean? And it's just one of those things that it was just, it just kind of brought me back to being a kid and just made me really and a burn book like oh my god did y'all have burn books when y'all were younger did y'all did y'all do that or did y'all have any version or any types of burn book let me know down below if you did I just don't need it that's kind of why I started to do this series as well because I want to stop and take a moment to really think about things before I invest my money and invest invest in it I don't really know anything about the brand not to say that the brand is not popular and it doesn't make really really great products but I personally don't know anything about the brand and if I'm gonna put money especially into brushes I want to make sure that they're nice and I want to make sure that they're gonna actually work and be good quality so it might be one of those things that I'm gonna revisit later on once I hear reviews and once I hear people actually talking about the brushes and the quality of the brushes I might decide to pick it up later on pride it's a little pricey I'm always buying one or two brushes here and there. So this is definitely something that was on my radar. It was definitely something that made me go, hmm. And I had to kind of stop myself from being like, yes, you have to buy that the second it launches. Sometimes I live on impulse and I black out when it comes to makeup purchasing and I like wake up the next day and I purchase something that I didn't really need. There's a possibility that that might happen with this situation, but it's something that I'm gonna kind of like, I'm talking myself out of purchasing it because I don't need it. Like I said, I have enough brushes, even though they look really nice, they look, the book just, it just looks so cute. Like, and that's how we get sucker in, into cuteness, and into things that are like nostalgic and bring back fun memories for us. Like, you know, with the Sleeping Beauty collection and the Snow White collection, things that bring us back to our childhood and our youth. That's what gets us. That's the kind of stuff that we're like, eat up and we, like, and we just want to purchase. And a lot of the times I purchase things, I would purchase something like this and it would just sit on display. Why am I going to purchase something that has a functional purpose to just kind of leave it in my background or to just say that I have it just to say that I have it? That's just such a waste of money and your girl don't got money to be wasting like that. For at least right now, this is going to be a pass for me unless I can like convince somebody else to get it for me as like a really early birthday present like really early because my birthday is not until December but this is not launching until August 30th so we pretty much have a solid month until this product comes out so the next thing I'm actually going to be talking about that in an anti-haul so let's move on okay so Colourpop is releasing some new concealers on July 27th they are going to retail for six dollars and they it looks like they're going to come in 15 different shades according to a trend moods Instagram it's going to be matte finish, medium to buildable coverage. It's going to be long wearing and it's going to make your face look airbrushed. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, because I don't really own anything from ColourPop at all. I've never really like dived into the ColourPop craze. I know that they're super affordable and I have always wanted to purchase things from them, but I just kind of never do. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to place like a, a, not like a huge order on Sephora's website, but I'm going to pick up some of their products, some of like their new face products, some of their new pressed eyeshadows, and go ahead and pick up this concealer. It's six bucks. What's the worst that can like happen with a six dollar concealer? I'm a little bit nervous because it does say matte finish and I have like desert dry under eyes, but I do kind of want to pick it up because I love testing out concealers. I have so many concealers in my collection and I definitely love testing them. I'm definitely into trying to find the best under eye concealer for my eyes. I have and I feel like I'm transitioning a lot right now because my skin is going through it. It's changing a lot. Things that used to work for me no longer work for me. So I'm definitely open to testing things in the past where I would have been like, Matt, no, absolutely not. I'm more, I'm more willing to be like, okay, let's kind of, let's see what happens. So for, like I said, for six bucks, 
it's worth picking up. People praise ColourPop for like everything that they release. So I feel like how bad could it be? And if it is super bad, at least it's not gonna be bad. Like, you know, a concealer that I buy from Sephora that's like $35 and I absolutely hate it and then I have to go and return it and wait in the line and you know be really really annoyed by the hella expensive concealer at least this way I can test out a little bit more from Colourpop so I'm gonna get it I'm gonna pick it up I'm excited about it I love the fact that they are so affordable I do feel like they release so much product it's so much and I do wish that I know that they're trying to stay on trend and they're trying to like you know keep everybody excited but sometimes it's like slow down Slow, slow down let us enjoy the products that you're releasing give us a minute to enjoy what you already have it's just too much and it, they're kind of, I just feel like they throw stuff at us but this is the first thing that they've released that I, it's to the point where I'm like yes I think I am gonna go hop on their website and purchase and I feel like it's concealer I don't think that people are gonna be like super excited about concealer because that's a lot of times why I don't fuss with ColourPop because all of their stuff always just sells out so quickly but I feel like I don't think that anybody's gonna be like waking up you know, at eight o'clock in the morning hopping on ColourPop's website because they have to buy a concealer. I could be completely wrong, but I think that this is one, I do think that this is one that I'm gonna go ahead and try out. So Milk Makeup just released a new uh, foundation. I wanna say that it is already available on Sephora's website. It retails for 40 bucks and it comes in 16 different shades. It says that it is the Blur Liquid Matte foundation and it is a full coverage foundation and it says that it's made with the same blurring microfear technology as the blur stick and the blur spray. I like the blurring stick but I've heard not so great things about the blurring spray. It says that it's weightless, it's oil free, silicone free, it's full coverage that will last basically all day. That's what it says on Trend Mood's website. When it comes to milk makeup I have a very love-hate relationship with their products. I either really really like them or I really really don't like them and more often than not I actually don't like their product. I like their blurring stick, I like their bronzer. I feel like those are the two products from them that stand out to me the most and I have tried a significant amount of products from Milk Makeup. It's been a while. I do have their skin tint that I am going to try out as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this foundation because I'm a foundation junkie and I want to kind of compare the skin tint to this full coverage foundation and the skin tint is going to be the foundation Friday that's going to go up this week. That's going to be the one that I'm testing out. Um, so I am going to pick it up. I'm a little weary about it because it says that it is not good for dry skin but it's good for combination skin so my skin is combination but it definitely leans more on the dry side than on the oily side the oiliest part on my face is my nose I can get a little bit oily in the t-zone depending on the foundation but for more often than not I tend to be on the drier side so I feel like I want to give milk makeup oh I did try their found I did try their concealer recently and I'm like okay with it I do like it I don't love it but I, I like it so I feel like I'm gonna give Milk Makeup one last shot, one last go before I just kind of throw my hands up. And overall, I'm just not in love with that brand. And I hear so many great things and so many people loving it and praising it. And then I'll try the exact same product. And then I'm like, what the heck? Like, what is this? This is more of a, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase it because I'm a lover of foundations. There's very rarely that a foundation will come out on the market that I will not try. It is a full coverage foundation. I'm starting to get a lot more breakouts lately and I'm kind of, so I definitely am, wanting to get a little bit back into the fuller coverage realm of things. I've definitely been doing a lot more medium coverage foundations recently, but if I'm gonna be breaking out again, I definitely wanna give a full coverage foundation a go. And again, I just wanna give them another try. That You know, they're natural, they're easy, they're quick. You know, it's supposed to be easy, effortless makeup. And for me, I feel like I want it to work for me. I am gonna be giving this foundation a try. I will probably be picking it up this week. It'll be next week's foundation, Friday, more than likely. I just quickly wanna say, this is not in the will I buy it, but because I, I don't even know what this stuff is yet, but I do wanna go ahead and say that whatever Desi and Katie are coming out with, I don't care what it is, I don't care who it's with, I will be buying it. Let me just go ahead and throw that out there like right, right now. Okay, and the last thing that I will not be purchasing and it's nothing, this one is kind of like, I know that these eyeshadows are gonna be absolutely beautiful and I know that they're gonna perform really, really well. And I love their eyeshadows. Melt Cosmetics is releasing a new eyeshadow stack and it's called the Hay Stack. The main, there's two reasons why I'm not gonna be pur purchasing this particular stack, even though I don't see a price on Trend Mood's website as of right now. The first thing is Melt Cosmetics, even though their eyeshadows are really, really good i'm not taking anything away from the quality of their eyeshadows they are a little bit on the pricier side especially for four to five eyeshadows depending on their stack it looks like this one is going to have four 
And the reason why I'm not going to buy this particular stack is because the price, every time I buy, I typically wait for Mount Cosmetics to have sales before I'll purchase anything from them because they are a little bit, like I mentioned, on the pricey side. And two, I feel like I have these colors in my collection already, especially with the amount of palettes that I purchased recently. I feel like I have colors like that in my new Sephora palette, similar colors to that in the Nicole Concilio palette and the Jaclyn Hill palette. I feel like I can create looks that these eyeshadows have very similar to the palettes that are already in my collection and Melt Cosmetics is just kind of expensive. I have, I want to say I, I have two of their stacks if I'm not mistaken and I love them but I don't really reach for them that often. When I first got them you could, I could, would not put them down like I lived for them. I'm just on eyeshadow overload. And it's to the point where we're just seeing, even though there are some, not all formulations of eyeshadows are created equally, not at all. But at the same time, it's kind of like, how many different eyeshadows do you need in the same color family? Even though this, even though Natasha Denona might have a better eyeshadow formulation than Urban Decay, and Urban Decay might be better than, you know, ColourPop. I, I'm not saying that any of these brands are better or worse than any of the other ones, not at all. I was just using that as more of like an example. So you're only gonna, you only got two eyeballs. You know what I mean? And chances are you're gonna apply the exact same eyeshadow on both eyeballs. It's starting, it's getting to the point where I'm just starting to feel overwhelmed with my makeup collection. And I wanna kinda take a step back. And eyeshadow palettes are the things that I typically purchase the most. You know, per, setting sprays you can go through quickly. You know, you can go through loose powders pretty quickly. I can go through primers pretty quickly. Things like that I don't feel bad about buying like in abundance because I know that I can use them up fairly quickly and I tend to go through foundations and I tend liquid products and powder products for the face I tend to go through pretty pretty quickly but eyeshadows and bronzers and highlighters you're never going to go through an entire eyeshadow palette you know so it's kind of like I want to take a step back and just put my eyeshadow like my eyeshadow purchasing on hold for a little bit just to give myself a chance to really really enjoy what I do have in my collection so do I think if you do not own any Melt Cosmetics eyeshadows I definitely would recommend them but I think I would pick up something a little bit more along the neutral side like their rust stack or even their dark matter stack is really really nice as well I will be passing on those eyeshadows if you are a lover of Melt Cosmetics if you love their formulation and you will be purchasing that eyeshadow stack let me know down below as always if any of this stuff is already out I don't think anything I'm talking about today is out yet I don't think so but if any of it is out and you have tried and you have used it and absolutely love it let me know down below let me know why you love it let me know if I should change my mind about any of the products that I did mention today and yeah that's pretty much it thank you for joining me on this week's will I buy it and I will see y'all next week bye guys